our first training video in 2 Timothy, which is our next series. Um, and it's going to happen from the 19th to the 7th of October. And what this training video is about is an overview of 2 Timothy. And I'd recommend watch the Bible Project video on it, um, pray about it, read the whole letter by yourself. But as we get into the training video, and as you start looking at the study and how the study is structured, it's an overview. It's important that we see the following things as we read and study and discuss 2 Timothy. But importantly, as we get into 2 Timothy, just a little bit of um, historical context, just from the letter itself. So, for example, outside of the letter, from church tradition, for example, Eusebius, we, we, he tells us, for example, Paul was arrested during the time of Emperor Nero, and then, of course, executed under his reign in around about the 1860s. And it seems that this is when this letter was written, while Paul was in prison in Rome. And just looking at the context of the letter, for example, Paul mentions he's imprisoned in Rome in chapter 1, verse 17. We also have all these various references which indicate to us what's happening with Paul. Firstly, that he is suffering. And for example, that he is somewhere probably imprisoned um, in a dungeon, not a house arrest. For example, Onesiphorus really struggled to find him. Um, because he often refreshed him, he's not ashamed of my chains. He tells him, for example, he really struggled to find him, if you go read that section. Also, he's still suffering. He's chained like a criminal. But when you get to the last part, chapter 4, you'll discover that Paul doesn't think he's going to escape this time. He says, the time has come for my departure. He also mentions that he already had a preliminary hearing, his first defense, and that didn't go well for him. And, of course, you'll see in verse 14, that Alexander the middle worker did a great deal of harm to him. In the sense, he really spoke against the message. So things are stacked up against for Paul. He's suffering, he's chained like a criminal, he's in a dungeon, and he doesn't think he's going to make it. And so he's writing this letter to Timothy. But what is Timothy experiencing? Now, if you read Acts chapter 20, verses 29 to 30, or the other chapters about Ephesus, Paul warned the elders of Ephesus specifically about false teachers, and it seems as we read the letter that this is beginning to happen. And Paul is already forewarning Timothy this will even get worse. So, for example, Paul mentions two people by name, which means Timothy must know them. Amenius and Philetus, who have wandered away from the truth or are teaching a different teaching. That's like gangrene. It'll bring death to the congregation. Paul then points out that, there, that in this, in the, he says, by Mark this, there will be terrible times in the last days, difficult times in the last days. The last days, of course, referring to the period between the ascension of Jesus and his return. We live in the last days. And he mentions that during that time, there will be people in, in, among God's people who will be lovers of themselves, having the form of godliness, but notice, denying its power, denying its message, denying the good news of Jesus, the promise of life. And as he warns Timothy again in chapter 4, verse 3, for a time will come when men will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, because they're lovers of themselves and pleasure and so forth, as he warned in chapter 3, they'll gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to say. And Paul's warning Timothy, don't fall for this temptation to start speaking in the way that people want you to speak. You will speak the truth and suffer for it, even if it means being chained for it. Like he mentions, join me in suffering for the gospel. So Timothy's context is difficult inside and outside the church. Paul's context is difficult, being in prison, awaiting death. But what are the big ideas in this letter? And I just want to highlight them to you. And you can divide it up into four sections, roughly. So for example, chapter 1, verse 1 to 2, 2, there's a big theme about entrust the gospel. So, for example, guard the good deposit that was entrusted to you. And then he also mentions in chapter 2, 2, and these things that you've heard me say in the presence of many witnesses entrust to reliable men. And interesting how Paul starts the letter, he mentions how through Timothy's grandmother and mother, and even if you read the letter through Paul, this good message has been entrusted to him. And so it's Timothy's res responsibility to do the same for others. The next generation. But also tied to this, if you go read chapter 2, 3 to 3, 13, there's a lot of mention, and also in chapter 1 and throughout, there's a lot of mention of suffering for the gospel. 
As Paul says, you know, however, all about my teachings, my way of life, my purpose, faith, patience, love, endurance, persecutions, and sufferings. And as he ends that little section about himself, in fact, everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. And this has been a theme. You will suffer for the gospel. You will suffer for the gospel because there are false teachers. You will suffer for the gospel because your community or the place where you're witnessing is rejecting the gospel and attacking you. But you're called to suffer. And not just in trusting and suffering, but another theme is continuing in the gospel. When you go read chapter 3, verse 14 to 17, it's quite interesting that the focus there is that Timothy himself, but as for you, continue in what you have learned. What you have been entrusted with, continue in it. Don't you abandon the faith at any point or stop learning or stop reading the Holy Scriptures and the Gospels which have been given to you. And then finally, the last section, with all these other themes still sort of interwoven there, a big theme as well is proclaim the Gospel. Preach the Word, he says. Be prepared in season and out of season. Correct, rebuke, encourage with great patience and careful instruction. And in many ways we could say these are the four big themes in Timothy. To entrust, to suffer, to continue and to proclaim the gospel. But why? Why? Why this calling? What's the heart of the letter? And I would say it's this. It's because the reason it's worth it is because in the gospel we have the promise of life. I mean, this is how Paul starts. Chapter 1, verse 1. He mentions Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God for what? According to the promise of life that is in Christ Jesus. And he repeats this idea that through Christ Jesus, God has revealed, through Christ Jesus, he's destroyed death and has brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. Remember Jesus Christ, he mentions it in chapter 2. He's raised from the dead, descendant from David. And he mentions it's for the sake of the elect, those to whom this gospel has been revealed, that they too may obtain. It's for their sake he's enduring this, that they too might obtain what that is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory, salvation. This promise of life, this destruction of death and immortality comes through the gospel. And then Paul personally demonstrates this by his waiting for his death. He mentions, now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day, the day of judgment. And not only to me, but to also to all who have longed for his appearing, the crown of righteousness. And then he mentions at the very end, chapter 4, verse 18, that his hope is, the Lord will rescue me from every evil attack and will bring me safely to his heavenly kingdom. And in many ways, here we have the whole idea what this promise of life entails. And Paul is saying, it's for this, this good news, that you're called, this is what you're going to entrust. This is what you're going to suffer for. This is what you're going to continue in. This is what you're going to proclaim. Because it's worth it. It's immortal. It's life and immortality in God's heavenly kingdom. With God. With Christ Jesus. In eternal glory. Forever. And that's worth it. And that's the heart of 2 Timothy.